I'm part of the BEAR team, which stands for Burned Area Emergency Response. And after the fire passes through, um, we actually go out and assess the watersheds and see how they were affected by the fire. So what we end up doing is we end up looking at how badly the soil burned and we look at some of the hydrologic features. There's a lot of other things we look at. We're looking at geology and then we have other specialists who look at archaeology and um, roads and recreation. And so we put a whole team together and we look to see how things are affected by both the fire runoff and the downstream runoff. The higher burn soils tend to be on the headwaters. Um, where it's drier, especially on the south aspect slopes where they tend to dry out faster. Uh, as, you, as you know, in this area we've got a really good fog inversion and it didn't really burn that hot in the lower part. Um, but as we get up here and it's above the infer inversion, things dry out, it's, that's where it tended to burn hottest. And you, you have the um, chimney effect too when the fire's running up a canyon. It b builds up inertia and burns the top part of the slope a little higher. The soil's actually altered the hotter it gets. Um, if you've noticed, we've got a mosaic out here, and so things that burned lightly, there's not much of a change. But in an area that we're standing at, you actually burn off your soil cover, and you start changing the soil structure. And so the, the soil, and, and you introduce a water repellency to it. So the soil doesn't infiltrate. You have soil that's been altered to where it's like a single grain soil rather than good soil structure, and that's a lot more easy to transport. So the erosion ends up being higher the higher the soil severity gets. And then when you get, get this water repellent layer, the infiltration's impeded and it wants to run off faster. So you combine the altered soil structure, the burned roots, and the water repellency, and that's why we get accelerated flow and erosion in, in a fire area. The steepness of the terrain here, it's, it's almost impossible to get a, any kind of a direct attack on this fire because it is so steep. And the number one, the number one thing about firefighting is firefighter safety and public safety and we're not going to put firefighters in an environment like this you know this hugely steep terrain uh, where there's a risk that somebody can get hurt or even die um, that's what that's what makes this fire really unique in, in addition to the um, enormous values at risk here I mean there's there's something like 6.8 billion dollars worth of values of a risk uh, threatened by this fire you know there's some really high-end homes in the area there's there's uh, just a, a wilderness area um, and so the nature of this fire is is unlike most fires you're going to see across the country to assess the soil burn severity um, have two really high-tech pieces of equipment here we have a soil knife and a water bottle um, when we're assessing the, the soil the the burn um, for bear, we're actually looking at the soil severity, not the veg severity. There's cases where the trees don't even look burned, but the soil will be burned pretty hot and vice versa. Um, so the first thing we do is we, we just look at the surface of the soil. Um, you can look at this here and you can see that there's soil, it's single grain. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not sticking together very well. So there's not a lot of cohesion be between the soil grains. In, in comparison, if you, I dug a little piece of uh, unburned soil and you can see how you have just like all sorts of roots, you have really good structure. Um, it sticks together very well. But the fire comes along and it affects the surface and takes that soil structure and turns it into this loose soil. Um, so we go down and we look and, and the, you can see the structure starting to come back and the roots are starting to come in. So this is a moderate soil burn spray. It didn't go very deep. It altered the structure on the surface a little bit. It burned some of the roots down about an inch, uh, inch or two. And, and so that's what we're looking at. It burned most of the soil cover off the top. Normally this is going to be 100% soil cover, but in reality most of the soil cover has been burnt off. And the, uh, the humus or the the decomposed um, organic material has been volatilized to a certain extent. Another thing we look at, we um, look to see what the water repellency is on that. So, you know, it looks like the water should pour right through there. And if you put water on there, you can see it beating up. It'll sit there and sometimes it'll sit there for five or ten minutes. Um, and that's the water repellents that we're checking. So that, that decreases your infiltration and increases the runoff. So what ends up happening is this organic material has, um, you know, the, the duff 
that burned up has organic compounds in them. And when it heats up, uh, it actually volatilizes that, that organic material and into a vapor. And it's almost like this waxy compound. It's like a vaporized waxy compound. And it gets pushed down into the soil. And when, the so when it hits a cool part of the soil, it coats the soil grains. So you're actually putting a waxy coat around the soil grains, which just like soap or, or wax, it'll, it'll beat up on, on that material too. So, um, but yeah, in some areas it's still beating up. Um, and we would call this a strong water repellency. Now, soils are naturally repellent to a certain extent. What ends up happening though, is now that you've removed your soil cover, which is the biggest mitigation for erosion, you remove that, you've kind of turned your soil surface into sand, you have a water repellent layer. And when it rains, it'll start reeling off that. And then, you know, in, in areas that have high burn, you, you look at the landscape and it ends up being, uh, you know, a bit of water that's coming down that should be infiltrating. By the time it starts raining, um, the, the effects of the fire start drifting from people's heads and they, they, they start, you know, the time frame, they, they start forgetting that this is a really, it could be an active landscape. So when the weather service puts out flood warning, uh, flood warnings, heed them and, and do whatever they're saying, whether it's evacuate or, 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 or just be careful. I mean, it's the, the, the weather service will give you giving warnings for probably two to three years after the fire. So it's very important for people downstream to, to uh, listen to what the weather service has to say.